Hello everyone, today we will be reading Princess Grace by Mary Hoffman. Grace wanted to be a princess for as long as she could remember. Most of her favorite stories were about princesses, like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and the one who couldn't sleep on the pea. Some became princesses with the help of spells, like Cinderella or Beauty. Grace loved to act out those stories, making her Nana play the fairy godmother or telling her cat Papa he had to be the beast. So imagine Grace's excitement at school when her teacher announced the annual community festival. Every year, girls from all the local schools got to be queens in the parade, and this year, there were going to be two princesses. At this year's parade, our float will be extra special, said the teacher. Our queen, who has already been chosen from the top year, had the idea to pick two princesses from our class. Well, after that, all the girls were twirling in imaginary ball gowns and saying that they were bound to be the parade princesses, especially Natalie. My daddy always calls me his princess, she said, so I'm used to being one. This made Grace sad for two reasons. She didn't like Natalie and she didn't have a daddy of her own. The boys were pretty disgusted with the whole idea. Princesses are Boring, said Kester. Grace rushed home very excited to tell Ma and Nana the news. So can I be a princess, Ma? she asked. And will you make me a costume, Nana? Of course, honey, said Nana. If you can tell me what a princess wears, I can try to make it. And of course you can dress up as a princess, Grace, said Ma, but that doesn't mean you'll get chosen in the parade. So Grace rushed off to get out of all of her storybooks to see if she could find out what princesses wear. Her best friends, Amy and Maria, came around to help. They didn't want to be princesses as much as Grace did because Maria didn't like being looked at and Amy didn't think her mother would have time to make her a costume. It must be pink and floaty with a train, said Grace. And a crown, said Amy. And a wand, said Maria. No, Grace said, that's fairies. Wings then, suggested Maria. Fairies again, said Grace. Or angels, said Amy. So what am I making? Asked Nana, confused. I don't know if it's a dress for a Christmas tree fairy or a bridal gown. It's a bit like all of those, I think, said Grace. Oh, I don't know. It must be very pretty. There's more than one way to be pretty, said Nana. I suppose it depends on what she does, said Amy. I don't know, said Grace. What does a princess do, Nana? You tell me, darling, said Nana. But nobody could, except for wearing beautiful clothes and looking pretty. That doesn't sound so interesting, said Grace. She liked having things to do. Maybe Kester was right. You know what, said Nana. I think maybe you've been reading all the wrong stories. Why don't you ask your teacher? So that's what Grace did. Her teacher took it very seriously and came back to class with a whole lot of stories about interesting princesses. There were real ones, like Amina of Nigeria, who led warriors into battle and built walls around all the villages. 
in Pinyang of China, who started a women's army. Wow, said Grace, surprised. They sound more like soldiers than princesses. They wouldn't wear anything pretty while they were fighting, said Natalie. I don't want to be that kind of princess. But their teacher had found modern princesses, too, who were sportswomen or scientists or artists. One had even been a spy. That's a bit more like it, said Kester. You could be one like that, Grace. Even the story princesses the teacher had found were not like the ones Grace thought she knew. There were Cinderella's from Egypt, Cambodia, and the Philippines, and a Zimbabwean girl called Nyasha, who was kind to a snake that turned into a prince. Grace felt less and less like being the pink and floaty kind of princess. She couldn't imagine making friends with a big snake and wearing a sort of fairy costume at the same time. Can there be princes in the parade? Asked Raj at lunch. Why does it have to be just princesses? Can't we have some of these other kinds from other countries? You've changed your tune, Grace, said their teacher. I thought you loved fairy tale princesses. I do, said Grace, but the other ones seem more fun now. And all the other children agreed. Hmm, said the teacher. I believe we're going to have to think again about this parade. The moms and dads and grannies and babysitters all chatted at the school gates, and the word soon went around about princes and princesses. You need to decide, Grace, said Nana. Have you made up your mind what sort of princess you want to be? The kind that has adventures, said Grace. And I'd like to be an African one. Is there one from the Gambia? Could you find me a story? Hold on, said Ma. Have you been chosen yet? Oh, said Grace. No, I haven't. I forgot about that. No harm in bringing prepared, said Nana. Do you know any Gambian princess stories? You could bring your pa, said Ma. He might know, but Grace's papa didn't know any, nor did his wife. It doesn't matter, Grace, said Nana. I could use some of that kente cloth we brought back from the Gambia and making robes fit for a princess. It won't be pink, said Ma. Will you still like it, Grace? There's more than one way of being pretty, said Grace. On the day of the parade, Grace's school had the most interesting float of all. But it was a bit crowded because of all the Japanese and African and Spanish princes and princesses. The whole class had been chosen. Maria didn't mind being looked at because she wasn't the only one. And Nana made a dress for Amy too. Raj was a Hindu prince and Kester was a sort of English knight. Natalie was like a Christmas tree fairy in a pink and floaty dress. But Grace didn't want to be that kind of princess anymore. She was enjoying her West African kente robes. Are you happy? called Nana. Yes, said Grace. I feel like a proper princess, ready for an adventure. And that's the end. Thank you for joining for Princess Grace by Mary Hoffman.